Well, Bliss Warren Friends folks, today it is July 14th, 2023. Let's dive right into Boatman's lesson. Today, it's assaulted for glory. Hmm, we all know what Jesus went through. 39 stripes, had to carry his own cross to Golgotha. That's the place of the skull. And then he was placed on there. And being crucified, that was one terrible way to go and still would be today if they still do that. I don't know they do or not in third world nations. Well, let's see what we got today. Assaulted for glory. Job 1 and 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? We have a quote from C.S. Lewis. The glory of God is the real business of life. <laughs> Hi, Owen. That's what I must be about his business. In word. We'd like to think that in our resistance against the enemy, God is our refuge. He is but not in the way we think. Far from being Job's hiding place, God became his PR firm. <laughs> he makes no attempt to shield Job's reputation from the enemy. He specifically points to his servant as a target. Why would God do such a thing? Job has served him well. Is this really the reward he gets? Does all of his righteous behavior really warrant the transaction made in the heavens when Satan approaches Job's refuge and the refuge points to Job? Why would God set why would God set his faithful servant up for temptation, even disaster? Because there is an overarching purpose in this universe, and it is not the comfort of man. We like to think that God exists for our benefit, that he's a heavenly wish granter and need fulfiller. And while he has committed to grant us our heart's desires, assuming those hearts are godly and to fulfill to fulfill all of our needs, assuming we look to him in faith. His actions are not guided primarily by the welfare of man. His actions are guided first by the glory of his name, and in this case, the glory of his name called for a demonstration. If you read Job, no matter what Job went through, Job lost all of his children. He lost his, he, his, the way he was making money. He lost his cattle. He lost his sheep. He lost his home, and he still praised God Almighty. He, uh, he, he kept praising him, and that's one of the things that... My pastor, Mona Bearshill, my mother-in-law, she taught us at Washington in 2015, 2016. At first, it didn't make sense because the pain was fresh when Annie left me in May 2nd, 2015. But when I heard that, I thanked the Lord for taking her because there was a purpose in it. Perhaps the purpose was that she's going to give her heart to the Lord and then our marriage will be reconciled. And that happened six years later. Five years later. Yeah, six years later. Indeed, the conclusion. We often get caught up in human-centered thinking. We assume that God's salvation is first and foremost about our well-being, and we even try to define well-being. For Him is comfort, prosperity, success, and health. God is interested in all those things. After all, He cares for us passionately, but there's a higher purpose, His glory. This is a God-centered universe, not a man-centered one. All praise, glory, and honor is on to you, Father God. Oh, hi, old age. Jesus, knowing you are the only way unto God the Father, and you died a criminal's death upon a cross of Calvary so we can have the holiness of your spirit. So as a warrior on the warpath against the evil one, we live it together in the army of you, Lord. You give us a shield and a sword so we get the enemy. We come. Ah, to heal, redeem, and restore in your glorious name. Hi, old age. Hose to the most high God. Oh, hi, old age. When you are under attack from the adversary, ask God to protect you and deliver you, for he leads you not into temptation, for he has delivered you from the evil one. But more than that, just ask to preserve, but more than that, ask him to preserve his reputation in you. Ask for his glory to be made manifest in the conflict. Ask for victory for his sake first and for your sake second. Understand that this conflict revolves around issues much higher than you. It revolves around the glory of God. That is why I carry the cross over in Anadarko, Oklahoma, so not that people see me, but they see Jesus. So that people see Jesus in me, and I'm giving Jesus' word that will lead you and I on the glory of God the Father. Because when you are released from this weak flesh, you will be taken up by the Spirit in His glory if you simply believe. And if you believe, you will receive every weapon against a deceiver, and you will know. You know, there's a, there's a, I can't remember who, I think it's Gideon maybe? Some of the men, or it was David in the 300. Some of the men, they went, they, some of them lapped up water and they were sent home. They, he had a great battle ahead of him. Might be Gideon on this one. But those of y'all that know the Bible, you know this part. And then there were those that, that drank. They drank from the water, but they kept their eyes forward. 
so they could see if the enemy was coming because you don't want to get caught drinking water you know what the little bighorn you know what a lot of those u.s cavalry soldiers died from they died from going to get a drink of water just <laughs> the Cheyennes and the Sioux were just killing them left and right i mean why would you wear wool like that in the first place in those hills i went over there man it's right there by hard crow country man thirsty just hurting in them wool thingies that's what my mother-in-law says because why would goopy shawanics wear that takoy stuff <laughs> but they died you see what i'm saying man don't die thirsty in your flesh let the spirit of god man just fulfill you and you'll have no need for that water no more for someday you will be complete needing nothing no more just like james james was jesus's half brother just like he said and then you will hear good job good and faithful servant and you'll hear your name bless your journey give god all the praise glory and honor right now <laughs>